All right, for anybody who uh, might be tuning in, I am on my way to Detroit, Michigan for one of my, or my, I should say my second home at uh, Five Ups Place, aka Steve Turner. A um, bunch of us are going out there to do some racing this weekend, and uh, I got a late start because I decided to hang back because my uh, new scales came in since uh, a lot of people didn't believe the whole um, bathroom scale technique, since I guess gravity works differently on bathroom scales. Um, everybody kind of avoided the numbers that I've been using for scaling TBN, Megatron, and any other customer bikes. Even though I've weighed bikes stock, and uh, you know they were in line with OEM spec. But that being said, I now have new scales. The thumbnail picture is the picture of the new scales. They're from Proform. Um, they, uh, I'd say they're a mid-grade brand. There's cheaper ones and there's more expensive ones. Um, this $1,000 is what I spent on them and that's about as much as I'm willing to put in um, just to prove that, you know, my other numbers weren't completely horse hockey. Um, we'll get more accurate specific numbers with these scales and it'll be a lot easier to weigh bikes too. They're very low profile, they're heavy, and they're tapered at the end so I can roll the bikes literally on them without ramps. It's pretty nice. Um, four scales, uh, because they are designed to weigh cars. Um, that being said, I haven't seen anybody do this, and I'm going to be doing this. But basically, I'm going to be using three scales to weigh the bikes, which is the only way you can do it. And the fourth scale is going to be used for the package weight, also known as the rider standing on it as well. So we can see what the bike weighs and then what the rider plus the bike weighs. So for the hell of bench racing and or excuse making, uh, we now have that information. But uh, so anyway, I'm heading up to Detroit now. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna either try and stream it, but it's probably gonna, I'm gonna go live. If the video quality looks like shit, I'm just gonna cancel the live and uh, do it all through recording. I might even just skip the live thing anyway and uh, just record it all. But we're gonna be weighing a bunch of bikes, including TBN and Megatron on the scales. I haven't used the scales yet. I, uh, I just got them delivered to my house today. I put batteries in them. I turn it on, make sure every scale worked and registered weight, and they teared out or zeroed out. And uh, that's it. Rebuy way to Michigan. Um, so, let's see. We're going to be weighing all the bikes. We have, like I said, TBN, Megatron, uh, let's see, 5 Up, his uh, Ducati, um, maybe his booster. We'll do his booster for the sake of, you know, comparing a near stock ish Busa to mine. Um, we have Boosted Catfish's bike. There seems to be real a lot of competition in the weight category between his bike and my bike and whose is going to be lighter. Um, I think it'll be close. I think my bike will have the edge. Uh, everybody seems to think uh, Catfish's BMW is going to be lighter, which it could be. Uh, the real advantage he has on me is that he's got a tiny fuel cell and uh, the uh, the shroud and a, a lighter seat setup. I have an OEM seat and an OEM tank. All bikes will be weighed with zero fuel. Anybody who is, I already told anybody who's traveling there to uh, weigh their bikes to drain all the fuel out of them now because everybody's going to be on MR12 for racing anyway, including TBN. Uh, I haven't put TBN on kill in almost a year and a half now since uh, I guess uh, Dallas uh, or Texas 2K20 was the last time TBN was really on kill. Ever since then, I've just traveled to events on pump gas and really haven't cared too much about the competitive side of things. Just having fun. So, um, all bikes will be weighed, no fuel. And because uh, that, I know other people disagree, but that's the only way to really weigh a race bike is with no fuel. Nobody puts a full tank of fuel in their bike. If you want to weigh stock bikes, that's fine, that recipe works. Um, but every bike holds a different amount of fuel, so you really can't weigh bikes with full tanks, comparably, in my opinion. Um, and even when Ricky and Chris weighed their bikes at the track, they weighed them with no fuel in them. So, you know, to each his own, but for me, I'll be weighing bikes with no, uh, no fuel in them. 
We're also going to have um, Brian Phillip, aka Nikita. That's the name of his bike. That's uh, the bike I'm racing. Uh, his is a. Uh, it's got stuff done to it. It's a night. It's a twenty. So it's got a slightly better motor than mine. Uh, he's about thirty to thirty-five pounds lighter than me. Um, so it's going to be a battle for me, and uh, I kind of look forward to it. I like a challenge. Uh, who else is uh, weighing their bikes? It's more than that. Oh, uh, MWP Dave is going to be weighing his ZX10. Uh, sorry for the shaky camera. Good old New England roads. Hang on, let me get past some of these bumps here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Alright, that should be decent for now. So, uh, MWP Dave on his ZX10, he'll also be bringing his, uh, his Turbo 14R. Um, let's see, Nick Russo will be in town, but he's not going to have his bike. Uh, Dr. Gap's going to be weighing his bike. Uh, his buddy Logan, who's uh, a bike that I worked on and tuned, that's a ZX10. That one will be uh, being weighed as well. So, overall, it's going to be fun. We're going to do the weigh-ins, the official weigh-ins, on uh, Friday. And then uh, Saturday will be grudge race day. And uh, Sunday, I think, is also going to be another race day, but it's probably going to be a more low-key uh, day. And I'm going to spend probably more time on uh, Megatron on Sunday. Uh, but Saturday, my efforts are all going into the ZX-10 and getting that thing down the road as fast as possible. So anyway, now that that has been summarized, I guess we can go to the Q&A portion of this. Let's see, top chat. About time. So it's only Mez who's commented. Thank you, Mez, for participating. I appreciate you. Um, and yes, some official numbers are coming soon because I don't expect the numbers to be much different than my bathroom scales because I've been through different sets of bathroom scales to find a set that I kind of trusted the number. So a couple uh, tricks out there for people who want to weigh their bikes with bathroom scales. One. No digital scales whatsoever. Digital scales, um, they tend to lock numbers. They don't just keep fluctuating numbers until, until you get off of them. So they'll lock a number and unfortunately, you gotta start over. You need to use an analog scale, typically with a dial. And you need to use one that focuses most of the, or, or the, the center of the weight, the entire pad of the scale is the sensor for, I guess, weighing the bike. Well, I don't know, using technical words here but a lot of scales have certain parts for like feet to use where you, and it doesn't work. You need to use a, an old school style scale. Those work the best. Get three of the same. Uh, I used $7 scales from Walmart uh, and they, they were pretty they were pretty solid in my opinion. Um, so I had a total of like 22 bucks after tax in, in scaling bikes. They were, they were like kind of tall and cheap. So unfortunately getting the bikes on required Putting them on stands, sliding the scales under them, lowering them onto the scales. Uh, this will be a little easier. Um, they can just roll the bikes up on them, like kind of like 650 and be done. Um, but these will give uh, believable numbers for people. And if people don't believe these numbers, then, well, tough shit, basically. Um, but I've weighed TBN on my bathroom scales, and it, and it floats between 348 and 350 with no fuel. And when I went to the track, it was 360. I do believe the track scale was a little on the heavier side because, in my opinion, all three bikes weighed a little more than I was expecting. Um, but uh, so we'll see on that. I'm going to trust this scale's numbers the most of all of them, and then uh, I guess we'll go from there. But mm -hmm. Red Bull, I've got a 12 hour drive. I'll probably be there about 6, I'm oh, sorry, uh, 7 to 8 a.m. Uh, let's see. Everybody hate Chris. Well, damn. Well, poor Chris, but says big fan, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Hector, come on. I wish it would just leave the chat on display for me instead of having to continuously click it. Uh, big race this weekend. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a free race. It's not uh, like that, but we're treating it like a, uh, a grudge race. I mean, the guy I'm racing is actually flying Nick in to tune his bike that day of the race. So, you know, 
he's uh, he's crossing all of his T's and dotting his I's, and I'm dotting all of my T's and crossing my I's. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of excited because uh, I really haven't spent any time on TBN. I did make some changes to it. It's a little lighter. Um, it might rev a little better now. Uh, made some some important changes in my opinion um, to the bike and it's going to be on MR and it's going to be on full send. Downside is me and my body weight. It is what it is. Nothing I can do about it. Well, there is something I can do about it, but nothing I can do about it this weekend. So. We are going to Mexico, but it's, uh, it's a pretty legit spot we've got for this area. And uh, it's com completely secluded. It's just a road. No one uh, uses the road for any kind of travel, so we can be on it all day. And uh, even if we get the boot, it's usually in a very nice, pleasant way. It's not a uh, hostile thing by any means. Is TBN still relevant, asks Hector. Uh, I guess we're going to find out this weekend, honestly. Um, in my opinion, yes, it very much is relevant. Um, it just kind of sucks that all of the fast bikes that it is technically competing with they either all are very light riders or they have jockeys who are very light. Um, and I'm 200 pounds, so, you know, when I'm going up against people with an extra 50 pounds of body weight on them, even if the bike's faster, there's a good chance TBN loses. Uh, that's just the nature of the, uh, the hobby, unfortunately. Loving Megatron and ready for more, says Rodney. I appreciate it. Uh, same, I'm loving Megatron. When it comes to just riding bikes around, I'd rather be on the Busa uh, all day, honestly. Uh, I just love that bike and how light it is and how violent it is. Uh, I just put a Drag Max on it for a little more consistency in first gear. Uh, it's got the longest gearing it's ever had on it. So I'll be testing that bike out Sunday against some locals. There's a 1441 Busa and a 1397 Busa I'll be racing. Both bikes seem to run pretty good. Um, but they are a lot heavier than TBN, so a lot heavier than uh, Megatron, sorry, and TBN, I guess. Why is the high speed lane going slower than the low speed lane? Is way of the rider factor in race. Oh, it's one of the most important factors. Um, it's unfortunate that it is such an important factor. I wish uh, there was a better way to compare motorcycles um, without having different weight riders, but unfortunately there isn't. Um, you know, I have a I have a couple videos back. I think it's in one of the Chronicle videos. Yeah, and the Doctor Gap video uh, is a solid example of that. Me racing Doctor Gap. And uh, uh, Mike, my 110 pound or 115 pound suited jockey, riding my bike against Brian or Dr. Gap. And the results were wildly different. Um, I raced him on pump gas and it was a damn close race. I pretty consistently had the top end advantage on Dr. Gap, but it was barely enough to squeak out any kind of win. Um, then he put his bike on MR12. I made no changes to TBN and just put a 115-pound rider on it, and you know it, it was it was pretty bad. It's a pretty ugly race in favor of TBN. Rodney says one of the best-looking boosters keep uh, around. I appreciate that. Thank you, um, especially since it's it is. Let's see what it's June now, so it is about eight months old. I bought a brand new 2020 model um, and I've done everything to it and I just love that bike. I I wish it came out of the box with like 40 more horsepower because I would probably never ride TBN again if I'm being honest with you. But uh, man, it's just a fun bike. Is this the, uh, the TBN versus Nikita race? Yes it is.
it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get this win, but I can tell you that if he beats me, he's he, he earned it. I'm not going to let I'm not going to give him any kind of uh, leeway. I'm going to send it and do everything I can to win the race. And if he beats me, he beats me. See, it'll be a good race. Uh, it's it's definitely going to be a good race. Uh, the one I'd say big advantage I have is that he's m much more green in racing than me. Um, I can tell you that when I'm ready to make a pass on kill, I'm going to make a pass. Um, he might make mistakes, stuff like that. So that's one advantage I have. But I mean, if he makes a complete clean pass, um, he's got more power than I do. Uh, I'd say TBN is lighter and probably more efficiently set up to use the power. I would honestly say it's the faster bike, despite on paper it not being the faster bike. Um, because as Brock always says, the devil's in the details, and that's wildly true. You can, I constantly tell people, I can give you every single part number to TBN, and there's a good chance the bike won't be as fast, because there's a lot of little things that go into it between light torque on certain bolts, stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of race trickery goes on behind the scenes. Um, but uh, his bike for sure probably makes a good five, six more horsepower than mine. So there's nothing I can do about that except get a uh, more updated motor, um, which eventually will happen for TBN. But for the rest of the summer, I'm gonna be focusing on um, lightening up TBN more, um, different wheels, body work, not race body work, but uh, low profile carbon tank, kind of like what Chris Moore had. Montgomery did his. Uh, Montgomery is going to be doing, they have a, a current, they currently have a 19 ZX10 in for body work. So if they if they make a set of headlights like they did for the Busa uh, and say a carbon tank for the ZX10, um, I'll be getting both of those. The headlights are very heavy on the ZX10. There's nothing else in the front end assembly wise that's really heavy that I would ever consider replacing. Body work, I wouldn't ever waste my time. OEM body work for life in my opinion. Um, but uh, the um, the headlights are they're very heavy so I'd replace those with the carbon ones with the LED bulbs in them and, the, and that and the, uh, the tank. Possibly an air shock, uh, some lighter wheels which are not out yet but I have some solid information and they will definitely be going on TBN. Um, Brock's going to be using me for uh, some uh, prototype exhaust testing for the, uh, the ZX-10. Um, I believe we're going to be doing a CT single exhaust, a CT meg, and a tie winder. Um, I don't know if I'll test the tie winder on my bike personally. I might have to test it on a drag bike. Um, and if I do test it on my bike, it won't have the lower fairings on it because I'm not going to cut up my uh, fairings for uh, an exhaust that I'm not going to use. If it were up to me, of those three exhausts, I'd probably use the CT Meg, which is the same exhaust that's on Megatron. Um, my ultimate goal for that swap and hope would be that it makes as much power as the Acura exhaust, which it should, um, and it drops a little bit of weight and it gives me a little more ground clearance. Ground clearance is probably the biggest thing right now. I put a Gen 4 oil pan on the bike, which gave me over the gen but the uh the fairings don't really bottom out on that bike because it's the back of the exhaust that bottoms out when the squat happens um the, the exhaust tends to scrape the ground right there it's the x10 guy who has a slammed bike knows what that flat um last two to one section is of their exhaust they always pancake that and hacker is notorious for it um so the CT make should clear that up, hopefully, um, and that'll be something I run on, on TBN. And then once all of these things are done, we'll be shifting back to Megatron, turbo, I'll probably turbo the bike, then put a motor in TBN, then put a motor in Megatron. I'm never gonna stop. I'm, I'm, it's gonna be endless money building these two bikes, but I'm okay with it, you know. In my opinion, everybody needs a, a cash-grabbing hobby to kind of get them through life 
happily, I guess you could say, um, without hobbies or, you know, some form of passion, uh, I feel like you're missing out on life, regardless of what that hobby is, be it knitting, racing, or whatever you do. Uh, let's see. Hang on, I'm just reading through comments and trying not to die. Luckily, there's not really any cars on the road. Or not a lot, anyway. Leonardo Jackson, I love TBN. Megatron looking good. Looking forward to the turbo build. Please document every aspect of the build. I will do what I can without giving away too much. Um, I gave away a lot with the ZX-10. And it's hard to say if it bit me in the ass or not because it did well on YouTube and got me a lot of advertisement on YouTube, but at the same time, gave away a lot of free information. So... You know, I gotta, I gotta figure that out with the uh, the Busa anyway. Uh, how about a carbon fiber subframe? Uh, that's also in the works as well. Um, it won't be a full subframe. It'll be replacing the metal side pieces with carbon, and uh, dropping, I believe, about two or so pounds there. And uh, I don't like the full subframes that are carbon because they put your body position much higher up. Because it's a World Superbike tail, they don't make like a a low profile tail section. Did I ever put TBN on a dyno? Yes, but that will be uh, kept anonymous only once. And it was really only because it was during the winter and I couldn't do any street testing with the new motor. 2020? Wow. 2022 Busa build in the works. Not yet. Um, and until someone wants to bring me a new bike and buy a standalone as the first mod, I don't have much interest in these new bikes. Um, yeah, I could partner with Bren and have Bren do the ECU tuning while I built the bike, that's always an option as well. Um, but if that person, say, doesn't want Brent to tune their bike, I have no way of currently tuning them. Not yet anyway, maybe I will in the future. But for now, I want to push Max ECU and standalones on some of these builds. Am I going to be building my own kit? I'll probably uh, start with a... Um, uh, wow! My brain is not working right now. Everybody's favorite uh, turbo kit. The uh, more expensive kinds. RCC, there we go, Jesus. I'll uh, probably start with an RCC kit and um, work with that as I see fit. Uh, it's probably gonna have multiple different turbos throughout its life because that's really the only way to turbo a bike correctly if you're gonna be uh, changing motors and stuff. A stock motor, sorry. A stock motor turbo isn't going to be the same turbo as a built motor turbo. And if you try to just put a big big turbo for a real motor on a stock motor Busa, you're not going to have a whole lot of fun. Let's see. Doesn't DME Montgomery make a carbon fiber sub? Uh, they do for the Busa, not for the, uh, uh, the ZX-10. Got a... Uh, a DME subframe on it. Will you use the salad fingers to race? I don't know what that means, Dom. Please clarify. Um, to answer your question, Silent Assassin, I know you're heavier than him. If he was to win, would you let a lighter rider ride your bike and rerun him? Personally, what I would want to do is I would want to keep riding my bike and consider maybe having Steve ride his bike. Steve in his full track suit is the same weight as him and he'll have no problem riding that bike. He's got a lot more experience than the owner of the bike. Um, so that's something I would prefer to do. The only reason why is because my ZX-10 is a little different than your basic ZX-10 between different dash, different kind of shift light, uh, different power band. Um, the average guy who's lighter than me is not going to ride my bike as good as me. They might go faster than me, but they won't go as fast as they could go. So we'll figure it out. If I'm only gonna deal with that if he beats me. If, if I beat him, I'm not gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna put a rider on your bike or a rider on my bike. I don't care that much, you know? Um, Cause it'd be obvious that if I won the races and he made a clean hit that I do have a faster bike um, as the heavier rider. But I don't care about that stuff. Um, I realistically want to win the race with me on the bike. I've done it before. It's going to be my first time I've beaten 
uh, a rider on a similar bike that was 40 to 50 pounds lighter than me. Um, so we'll see. Travel in the rain. That's the worst. It can never be a beautiful, nice travel. It's always got to be raining. Oh. Let's see. Comments. How far into the travel are you? I left uh, 45 minutes ago, and it's a 12 hour drive, so not very far. Um, I slept till like one o'clock today though to make sure that I was as rested as possible for this drive and I'll probably get to Steve's and I'll take my uh, my hour to hour and a half power nap to recharge and then I'll be good for the rest of the day again until I pass out at night. Darth Ninja says, uh, gonna hit you up on IG soon, wanna talk about tuning my H2. Do me a favor, don't hit me up on uh, IG. Please email me, uh, egrperformance at yahoo.com. That email is subject to change, however. Um, that will eventually be my personal email, and I'll have a, I, I bought the domain egrperformance.com, so I will eventually have an email of sales at egrperformance.com. I just haven't done that yet because, you know, full plate back burner type deals but that will be changing but for now it's EJ performance at yahoo.com uh, Evan in the toe ST you're goddamn right Brian says we're in Cincinnati Brian Phillip in the chat is uh, the owner of Nakita Robert Rad Radloff GT, oh my god, Rumble Strip, we're all gonna die. Uh, GT 2871R would be good turbo for the power you want. We'll see. That's all. We're a long way away for uh, specking it on a motor build. It's gonna be a stock motor, probably 300 horsepower bike for probably all of 2022. I don't plan on putting a motor in it. I really want to uh, refine my tuning ability with max ECU and use a, uh, a less forgiving motor, like a stock motor, because. Um, you become a better tuner when you're dealing with fragile components. If you have badass components, like there's a lot of bad motorcycle tuners out there because motorcycles are very, very hard to break, um, at least in a bolt-on or naturally aspirated configuration. It takes a really, really, really shitty tune to break them. Um, and they usually just faster or slower. So I want to do a lot of my practice tuning with the stock motor because if I have an oopsie, is a good chance bye bye motor. Whereas if I do a really nice motor, um, I'll have a little more leeway for oopsies. And I don't want that. I want to learn on the motor that really doesn't have a lot of value and then go from there. Most of the, uh, the higher horsepower boosts run 35 Rs. I believe that. Salad fingers are much lighter than regular fingers, so you should use them to save weight. I see uh, Dom's been smoking the uh, the ganja on the way down. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you can think of a bad tuner that no one would think is a bad tuner. I could probably show you a dozen of those, um, but I will not name names because it's not what this is about. I try and always get my own success off of proving my product rather than bashing someone else's product. Um, can I tune each cylinder with a max ECU? I damn hope so. You can do it with Woolet. Oh. Better be able to with a max ECU. I'd imagine you could. That would be... Nobody would use max ECU if you couldn't do that. Um, Realistically, I should just download the software and really explore it, but, you know, that's just something that takes time. Learning new programs is not always the easiest thing. Learning learning new softwares, regardless of what it is, tuning, video editing, whatever, um, 
it's never about understanding what to do. It's about understanding what to do with that particular program. The layout, what tra each translation means. Some things are defined more simply. Other things are basically hex code. So, you know, even Woolwich, as simple as Woolwich is, for a first-time user, can appear as complicated if you don't know what each thing does. So it's really always about learning the software more than anything else. And then make things just not go boom. No, I know you can think of one, Chase. I was just saying I could think of a bunch as well. Um, uh, Sri Rossi says, Evan, could your Kawasaki have beaten Chris Moore, Suzuki, Jixer with uh, that he beat Ricky on? Uh, yes, but mine's also not stock motor. Um, and mine would also have to be set up for the quarter mile. It wouldn't, in its current 60 inch uh, trim, no, it would not beat either of those bikes in the quarter mile. Um, it would be both bikes in a half mile, for sure, without a doubt. Um, it's the most powerful of the three bikes, and was lighter than Ricky's bike. Um, realistically, if I built Ricky's bike, though, um, at the end of the day, it's the more powerful bike. I know a lot of Jixer guys, I think the Jixer is a better bike in terms of um, delivering a better factory product to the community. Um, it does everything better. The only thing it doesn't, put it this way, if the Jixer had 10 to 15 more horsepower in stock form, I would have a Jixer. Um, I think they're amazing bikes, but at the end of the day, when you are limited to stock motor and stock frame as your only stipulations, why would you not choose the motor with more power? It's a dumb decision to do. Because you can do anything else to the bike. Change the gear ratios to make it whatever you want. Both of those bikes had custom gear sets in them. Neither of them were stock transmissions. Um, you can do anything else to the bike. You know, Look at it like this. Uh, the, the ZX-10 was matching the, the, short, hat, the short track um, of the Jixer and eighth to quartering it better consistently um, with an extra 30 pounds, the same weight, which could be done very easily. The, the ZX-10 was more dialed in to work better in the 330 as well as the Jixer, um, it would just be all around the faster bike. I guarantee you that would have been a 780s bike every single pass, without question. It's crazy to say that, but it's all weight. It's all weight and it's all physics. Um, but uh, to answer your question in that long-ass long tangent, if TBN was set up my way for the quarter mile, it would it would be beating both of those bikes fairly handily. Um, but again, it's not a stock motor, so it's kind of void of what they were trying to do. Let's see. Is it possible to reduce H2 weight to 450 pounds? Absolutely. Just a question of money. No one believes my weights on the Busa because everybody says it's not you it's possible but not cheap. Well I've never said it didn't cost anything to do. You know, the first 50 pounds, maybe even 60, 65 pounds that come off the Busa are almost free, minus the exhaust. Third pounds of it is exhaust. Um, after that you can just rip weight out of the bike without spending any money and it's fairly cheap. But I mean there's a lot of money spent on Megatron already. Um, I haven't added it up completely. I don't want to because I don't want to throw up. But it's probably already in the range of 13000 And remember, I don't pay labor. That's just parts. So, you know, and it's a stock motor bolt-on bike. That's still pretty slow. It's fast for what it is, but it's underpowered, unfortunately. So, you know, if it made... I would give up 20 foot-pounds of torque for 20 horsepower any day of the week on that bike, and then it would be a pretty strong bike, in my opinion. Um, let's see, Robert says, I've been following TBN for a while. I'm excited about the Megatron build. I would love to run the Busa. 
once it's turbo if you ever bring it to Florida. I'm sure I will. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to build it for a mile though. Um, it's probably always going to be a half mile bike. I'm a half mile guy through and through. Um, it's kind of my preferred distance for racing. Um, maybe I'll consider a um, setting up for the mile for a Florida event, but man, turbo bikes and mile racing, the shortened life of that is quite a bit. So I'd rather stick to half mile. So if you're willing to do like a half mile run, hell yeah, I'm in Florida all the time, so. I want to build an ET, but ET, so that's what I want to do with Megatron that you won't see a lot of, even with the fast ones out there. They do exist, but they're super rare. And that is, I want to do a turbo bike that ETs its ass off in a shorter distance. You always see turbo bikes fall way out of the race and then just have a long road and they run them down and destroy everything. Um, I want to be ahead of pretty much everything in the half mile. That's my goal for that bike. So all of the stripping the weight out of the stuff, all of that was all intentional regardless of what the build was gonna be. Um, because I don't need a lot of power for the half mile with when it's low weight, you really don't. H2s do fantastic with 300 horsepower because they're a very aggressive 300 horsepower and they put it down well. Typically Boosas, when you see them turbo at about 300 horsepower, they're very heavy, they're very stockish. Um, they're lazy and they don't put the power down. And even by the time they started to pull well, even at their best pull, they're not as strong as an H2 with the same power. So they're way out of the race. So I won't be building a turbo booster like that because to me that's a waste of time. Unless you're just that guy that wants a, you know, a Cadillac that has some own snot to get out of its own way, then yeah, I understand that. But Ever, do I know anybody's ever used Alpha Racing Electronics? It's what we use here in Europe on their race bikes. Yeah, I've heard of them. Never, no one locally though, using them. Uh, Skywalker Rider 77. Evan, regardless of your weight, you built a reputation hang on, in some badass bikes. I'm 6'1", 250 pounds. So I feel your pain. It'd be cool to see you go drag racing. Maybe some future content. Maybe. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of losing interest in personally racing. Um, I want to have my own bikes. I want to continue to develop my own bikes, but I would prefer to just go to events and watch racing at this point. I don't really think I'll ever care to drag race. I have drag raced on the street plenty of times, but I don't know if I'll ever care to, to drag race the track. I'd rather be crew chief at the track, you know, and just set a guy up and do stuff like that. Oh, I'm sure Al anything Alpha Racing is expensive. Intercooler or methanol? Undecided as of right now. Uh, not intercool would obviously be lighter, but uh, um, I want the bike to be safe on pump gas. Obviously, it'll be turned way down on pump gas regardless, but uh, I would like it to really not be able to hurt itself on pump gas. So, kind of favoring an intercooler setup. Um, and I understand, yeah, you can use methanol with pump gas. I get that. But at least with an intercooler, you don't got to worry about running out of methanol. Whereas, obviously, without one, you do. So, all that's undecided. That's not, I'm not even going to think about that stuff, really, until the wintertime when I uh, start to build the turbo bike. Thirty-nine minutes in, I'll probably go um, either an hour. Yeah, I'll probably go an hour on this uh, live stream. Aerodynamics influence a lot in a race. Uh, depends on the distance of the race, really. Quarter mile? With no, not really at all. Um, unless you're sitting up straight like a wind sail, then that, yeah, that'll slow you down. But, like, fenders and stuff like that doesn't do shit in the quarter mile. Hell, it barely does anything, if at all, in the, in the half mile.
How do I feel about electric bikes? Ever cross one, ever come across one in the street racing scene? Uh, not in the street racing scene. I've never even ridden one. I'd like to. Um, I know to a lot of people it's not nearly as cool as a combustion engine, but uh, it um, it's definitely the future. And if done right, it would be way faster than any combustion engine bike ever done, period. Just be the mastermind behind the bikes and have jockeys to the drag racing like David Fund and an XDA. Exactly. That's exactly my point. What Brock is doing is kind of what I want to do. He does more, he focuses more on supplying uh, parts, whereas I want to do the actual building. Um, just as a uh, uh, little piece of information, it looks like I'm going to be a dealer for Brock soon as well. So I'll be able to be getting parts from him for these builds. a single caliper feel honestly it feels fine until I did the cut down rotor um, I don't really like the cut down rotor on the Busa not because of stopping power bike still stops fine but because it's waved and the way it's waved the pad the edge of the pad kind of walks off the uh, the rotor it can't fall out but it's just a little bit it walks off when it's braking on that wave and creates a very pulsing brake feel it's not like a warped rotor. It's a different kind of feel. You don't feel like in bar shake, but you feel it in the brake lever. You feel like a, you feel more bite, less bite, more bite, less bite, more bite, less bite as it's rotating. And I don't really like the feel, but like I said, it stops and it did shave a pound off the rotor. So, you know, but I have tested it in a, an emergency situation. Um, when I was racing out in Florida and doing the mile with the bike, um, one of the spots they use, I don't like it all, they use an intersection as the finish line and they usually have it blocked off, but like a hundred feet after that intersection is another intersection that nobody was paying attention to. And that intersection is used to load boats into the water. And there was a guy just towing a boat across the water or across the road into the water and I'm doing over 200. And I'm like, oh cool, that's a boat. Uh, not going around that. So I had to use the brakes, and uh, the bike stopped. It stopped. It's it slowed down quite fast, and luckily I was able to miss the boat. But uh, obviously I'm still here. But so I've I have tested that rotor in emergency situations, and it does still work quite well. I don't understand your last question there, Lucas. Let's see. Do you think the next battle of the brands will be more brands? New Honda, new BMW, maybe an R1 in addition to the Jigster and ZX10. Seeing you involved was really cool. Appreciate that. Um, it was really cool to be involved with that. And I, I hope we can get a, at least someone competitive with each brand. Different crews. Uh, I obviously want to do the Kawasaki since the platform I know the best through and through. I can literally put together bikes like TBN in my sleep without thinking about anything. Um, so I want to do the ZX-10 open to what year I don't care as long as 19 and newer I really don't care um, and uh, since obviously we're limited, we're limited to the motor stock motor so I prefer to have a higher horsepower stock motor obviously um, and I'm open to who would be riding it uh, I don't know if Ricky's Ricky hasn't been showing me much interest in it but his his nephew Richard has definitely said he'll ride it, um, and he's right now currently he's uh, he would be the new gangster. He's probably more on top of his game than Ricky is, um, so I'd consider using him. Um, someone said Givens. Givens is good, but he's a Jigster guy, so I don't know if he would. Um, there's a couple other guys in mind. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind using. I'm open to really using anybody. I really wouldn't want to use a hundred pound rider. I know Fonden's kind of like the go-to guy right now. In my opinion, he's a little too light. Um, he's the big advantage. In my opinion, if he's going to be riding a bike against other middleweight-ish riders, then he's got to ride every bike. You know? Um, so, either way, I would like to see more brands involved.
Yeah, I'd, I'd, like I said, I'd do the ZX10 platform. That's the one I. That's the one I'd prefer. I'd do any one of them because honestly, they're all the same. Everything applies to all of them, but I just know what parts, what tricks, every single thing to do to the ZX10. Whereas on some of the other bikes, I'd have to figure it out. You know, I could figure it out. It's just time, and I need someone to give me a bike for a while to learn that. Whereas you drop a ZX10 off and fund it. You know, parts delivery would be the longest part of the process, and you know, I could I could spit out 7980 ZX10s for customers for drag racing, but they have to spend money and they have to not debate with me what to do. Just do what I say. Trust me. Um, debating with me ends up slowing you down. Just take my word for it. Not to sound cocky, but when it comes to the 10 the 10R platform, I've just I've just done a lot with it. You know. See, what bike do I think is king of the quarter mile? And if they did a race of the max effort brands and with good riders, hypothetically, that's a hard one to say. So, the BMW. So, if we're gonna let's just use Brock's dyno for uh, example, I think Brock has probably the, uh, the most unbiased uh, dyno comparisons. Um, the BMW uses the most power. The ZX10 has made the second most power, and the Jigs are third after that. Um, I don't know if he's dynoed many R1s. Uh, I don't think he's done the new CBR. The new CBR, I think, makes the most power, in my opinion, of all the bikes. In my opinion, just motor itself, the CBR has, the new CBR, the Triple R, has the baddest motor in it. Uh, I don't care about shift cam. I don't care about VVT and the Jigsaw. That's street stuff, in my opinion. That stuff make the average guy on a heavier bike who wants to road race have a shit ton more mid-range power for exit speed and corners or be in third gear and just roll on throttle and be out but at the end of the day power in the rev is kind of what wins all distance of racing um, in a max effort platform that is so if all platforms are created equal and all bikes are as easy to do I'd say the Honda has the biggest advantage. Um, then it's real close between ZX10 and BMW. Then Jixer. Then maybe the R1. And then everything after it. Uh, Ducatis make good power, but they're real hard to deal with chassis-wise. BMWs are also very hard to deal with chassis-wise. So, in reality, I still say the ZX10 is still the go-to bike. Battle it with the Jixer. I think there's more following of the Jixer, which is going to make the average guy probably go faster on a Jixer. Um, but I still think, at the end of the day, the ZX10 is probably the better platform for a max effort bike, um, and the Jixer is the better platform for the basic bike. <clears throat> but who knows? Maybe I'm full of shit. Um, let's see. BMW, though usually has kind of a cult following in drag racing, so I think you'll probably see that bike start to do well in the future. Still has a difficult chassis to deal with. Difficult electronics, stuff like that. LSP uh, ZX10, that is Logan. On my way home to put my bike together. Uh, pumped for this weekend. Drive safe, Evan. I'll do my best. Currently streaming and driving, so not the safest thing. <laughs> Uh, Chase M, weight vest on Fondon if you were to get involved. I don't know. I mean, you don't want to, like, punish them for just being naturally lighter than people. But at the same time, it is a definitive advantage. So what do you do, you know? You can't say, no, you can't race. How fast can put a Gen 2 Busa goes in the quarter mile uh, with my knowledge probably pretty quick uh, I still don't think it would be as fast as the uh, the ZX10s and the, 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 uh, the other leaders at the end of the day it's still gonna be a heavier platform and it's still gonna be underpowered uh, the torque and the clutch would go a long way for the short race um, I could probably build one to be the best short race bike that a 14R but I don't know if it's going to have the power out the big end to carry its weight to really win the race. Um, 
the 14 R's make great power, but the chassis are ha much harder than the Busa to get the weight out of them. Still trying to get one, but we'll see. Is 260 horsepower possible with the original ZX-10 engine using nitrous? Sure. How long you want it to last, I couldn't tell you, but it's definitely possible. Yeah, the old front fairing should fit it. It's honestly the new ZX-10 is kind of the same bike as the old one uh, with new fairings. Um, the new RR motor gets titanium pistons, but I'm being honest with you, I don't think there's an advantage to the new base model motor over the 19 to 20 motor. You just get a bike you can't currently tune. But we'll see. But yeah, I'd be definitely down for a battle of the brands too. Um, Whoever wants to do it. I have a few guys already that want to do it. Um, we'll see. It's really going to come down to funding, you know. And if the person I need to fund this is literally got to be like, when they need, when you need money, they just send it, no questions asked. We're going to talk about the setup, no questions asked. So-and-so's got to ride the bike, no questions asked. Kind of like a bank loan in a sense. Just sort of do it. And there's the money. Okay, do what you want. Minus the paying back portion. But, uh... That's what it takes to break records, guys. It's not just... You know... It's genius. The whole... So, this is something I want to talk about in my live stream I did with Adam. Right after the Battle of the Brands that I kept forgetting to talk about. And that is... Why the stock motor thing is so big in this world. Compared to, say, Ricky's Real Street Bike that's faster and broke a record nobody gave a shit about because it wasn't a stock motor and it was a turbo bike so um basically stock motors create a shit ton of buzz why is that well you just saw you know chris moore go 790 and change and let's face it ricky's bike could do the same thing um 790 and change stock motor bikes so what's going to happen is Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to think, oh, well, I'm going to go buy a Jixxer. I'm going to go buy a ZX-10. I'm going to go down to the Brock's catalog and buy every part, and I'm going to fucking ride that bike, and I'm going to go 7980 on that bike. No, you're not. It's going to be a lot more involved than that, I promise. But it creates the buzz because people want to think that they can do it because stock motors are relatable. You know, everybody can go buy a bike with the exact same motor that those two bikes had in them and it makes them think that they can do that. There's a lot of effort that goes on behind the scenes. So yeah, you're gonna need all the parts, you're gonna need all the finesse, you're gonna need all the techniques, and you're gonna need all the knowledge. Can you do it? Yes. Is it as easy as the internet makes it looks? Absolutely not. So, fair warning. If you're a half a second off the pace with the exact same bike, don't be surprised. Mike Matchett, when is Brock bringing the CT Mag for the ZX-10, or is it going to be a one-off? No, it's not going to be a one-off. I'm just going to be doing the testing for it. Um, so the reason why the CT stuff hasn't hit the ZX-10 yet, even though it's been out, you can essentially fit a 2011 to 2021 exhaust on any of the three bikes, or the three models of bike. Um, so... The reason why is there's not a lot of demand in the drag racing world for ZX-10s as there are for ZX-10s, BMWs, all those bikes. Um, and Brock is a businessman. So, like anybody else, why would you invest money into R&D for something for a product that won't sell? Now, it doesn't mean it won't sell. He's obviously seeing now that, well... Maybe now I should be doing this because maybe it'll sell. And I've, I, I'm a, I'm a bird in his ear. Please give me all of the pipes because they will sell. Myself alone will sell enough of those pipes to my customers to keep them off the shelves. So CT Meg, CT Single, and Tie Winder, they're all the same company. They're a Japanese company. And the company, um, they uh, it's not easy for them to get these bikes, believe it or not, being Japanese bikes. Brock explained this to me. 
um, even though they're JDM bikes and it's Japan, it's not easy to get the bikes for this research. So they have one now, they have a 21, I believe. And if it, I believe the 21 is the hardest bike to fit a pipe because of the oil cooler. So if it fits a 21, it'll fit the rest of them. Um, so it's not made yet. I will likely get, be getting the first set, maybe. Um, according to Brock, it sounds like that's what he wants to do. So I can do the testing, and then, you know, once I, I get to do the testing for him, okay, mass produced, here we go. I personally, like I said, I want a CT Meg for my own bike. I uh, would like the bike to be a little bit louder. Um, I like the quiet, but at the same time, I don't like the seat, the, the SC can, just loud open pipe stuff. I hate that. Um, I was thinking about cutting down my Acro muffler two, three inches uh, to give it a little more sound, but if the CT stuff is coming, I'll just wait. my opinion on Triumph. Do they make a great race bikes? I honestly couldn't answer that. I've never even ridden one. What's going on, Chad? Turbo ZX-10R, I'd probably pass on. Uh, it's just so much harder to turbo a one liter over a big bore. Mostly just a Busa. Busas are just the king of big projects and big power. You know? Making 300 horsepower on a one liter is 450 horsepower on a Busa and then it just astronomically increases. Do I think the Gen 3 boost will go over 200 horsepower after all the restrictions are removed? Oh, uh, no. No, I don't. At least not on, you know, a loaded up normal dyno like a 250i. Um, I'd expect my boost on a 250i to make 180 to 185 with the tire. Um, and I mean, it's not bad power, but I see the Gen 3 making within 5 horsepower more than that. It's nothing new major on that motor. They didn't change valve angles. They changed a couple little things, but nothing that's going to, like, really bump power up. Which is unfortunate, but that was their decision. But all right, we're closing in on kind of the time frame I wanted to keep this under, about an hour. So, any final questions, I'll answer, and then I'll, uh, I'll sign out out of this. I think I go to the bathroom anyway. Thank you, Red Bull. Uh, let's see. The International Motorcycle Federation uh, agrees with you. Hang on. Because they didn't... Hang on, it's hard to... Bumps, bumps make it hard to read. Hold on. Because they didn't even bother to review the revlement for the new ZX10 RR and World Superbike. Chad says, very impressed with all the work on the antidote. Uh, been a friend of Ricky's for over 20 years and been there every step of the build. He did most of the mechanical work. I just refined a lot of stuff and put my touch on a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things about that bike that I would have changed though. Um, shock would have been different pipe would have been different uh, those are two of the major things that I would have changed um, let's see and also probably body work would have been lighter would have been a good bit lighter I would have had a lot more weight out of it personally but hey rinse and repeat stop here in PA and save me the trip next Friday <laughs> sorry man can't do it I've only got a one bike trailer personal life problems Safe trip, Evan. Thank you. I appreciate it. So dope that you work in all the brands of the bike and make them form. Uh, I try to not be brand loyal. Uh, I've, I've labeled Kawasaki, and I don't think I can escape it, so I might as well just embrace it and put my focus on it since it's kind of what brought me into the limelight of uh, both YouTube and the business side of things. So I'll probably... I do them all. They really are all the same to me. Um... Like I said, if the jigs are made 10 to 15 more horsepower, I'd have my own, but, you know, they don't. Uh, why different exhaust from the Sidewinder? Uh, that pipe has a lot of uh, turbulence and velocity issues. It was a, a 4 to 1 type exhaust 
super short pipe um, not good for a, uh, a stock one liter motor that uh, that kind of pipe like that needs a really really big motor it wasn't a sidewinder by the way um, it was a, uh, a a custom made pipe what I would probably do on a version 2 bike would be a tie winder which is why I'm happy um, there might be one coming Get Richard to ride the antidote versus Chris Moore, and then you have a race. Battle of the Brands, too. Um, but the problem is he's lighter than Chris Moore, so I wouldn't just want to beat him with a lighter rider. I want to beat him with a faster bike, just a consistent rider. Um, but, uh, no, back to the pipe. The pipe he had on it, he couldn't even stabilize a rev. So he would have to bring the revs up real, real, real high. And... It would be, uh, uh, if anybody watched the video, it took him always a few seconds to get a stable rev before leaving. Mike would fight him. And there was nothing I could do about it in the tune. Um, street pipes don't do it. Sidewinders really don't do it. Um, that was just a pipe with no velocity, a lot of turbulence, and not to mention, too, the wide band where all four primary tubes met in the collector because it was a four to one, there was a wide band shoved right in the middle of that. Just not a good exhaust design for a bike that does not have a lot of airflow um, or a lot of velocity, I should say. A big, big, big motor that made a lot of power, that pipe probably wouldn't give a shit, but on a stock motor ZX-10, absolutely. One day I'll get a 21 ZX-10. I got a few guys in the works on that. Size of the sticker. Someone makes it. I forgot their name. I bought it a long time ago. If Mez is still watching this, he knows the guy, ZX-10 Mez. Um, but he's on Instagram. He makes them. He goes over the factory sticker, the red sticker. Don't remove that sticker and put that one on. Just make it over because the factory sticker is a metal backing one for heat, whereas this is just an overlay. But, uh, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the stream out so I can focus on ride, uh, driving, not riding, and uh, gas and bathroom brakes, stuff like that. Um, like I said, stay tuned for tomorrow. I'm going to try and go live. Um, it's not back pressure, by the way, Chad. It's You never want back pressure. You want velocity. Um, basically, you got a pipe, say this diameter, and you have the air or the, the exhaust gases inside it bouncing up and down like this. There's no velocity. You need velocity and volume to make power through everything, through the rev range. That pipe had absolutely no velocity to it, just all volume. It's comparable to basically, you see in monster trucks where they just got four primary tubes that just go into the atmosphere because the motors are so big they don't give a shit. Um, but anyway, like I said, stay tuned uh, for tomorrow. I'm going to try and go live. The service at his house is very bad and so is his Wi-Fi. So I don't know if it's going to work out well. Um, so if it doesn't, I'm just going to go film everything and uh, then put out a video probably for Monday. I won't have a video to go live this Saturday. Um, I'll be recording probably several videos. I'll probably do uh, the weigh-ins as one video, uh, day one race day, and then day two race day as a separate video. We'll see. Maybe I'll include them all at once, but I'd like to do it like that. Anyway, for anybody who did hang out and watch, I appreciate it. And uh, do I say, as always, I'll see you in the next one? Screw it. As always, see you in the next video. Peace, guys.